Okay, should you buy an electric drum kit? If you're anything like me, I'm 41. Older generation, you'd say, of drummers. I've been playing since I was 12, something like that. And uh, electric kits weren't such a thing when I started drumming. I started drumming on, uh, you know, whatever sort of kit it was in the in the high school, my first year of high school. Um, first song I played was Slippery When Wet by Bon Jovi because I looked at the music video, saw Tico Torres and I thought, man, maybe I could do that. Turns out I could. Obviously I had to practice and get a lot better, etc. But anyway, my point is electric drum kits were not as readily accessible as they are back in the 80s. Now you can get a decent electric drum kit for... I don't know, 300, 400 pounds. When you look at it, it's not, it's not that much. So the point of this video is I hate electric drum kits. Or at least I thought I did. I still kind of do hate them. Compared to playing real drums, for me there's no competition. But, however, I think now more than ever, age of the internet, these things serve a purpose. First one being is, you can practice at home, whatever you like, just about, within reason for what you've got. Drum kit wise, you can practice. You can practice rudiments on the kick, on the snare, work out ideas for your band. You know, they are, they are a really handy tool. This is my first electric drum kit. I got this oh, nearly two years ago. And it is, sir, it's been a, a really useful weapon in my arsenal. Uh, when, you know, as drummers we sit about, we think about an idea. You can't wait till the next practice to come and try it out. Now, you, now I've got this, I can just nip through next door, play it in this, record it, see what it sounds like. You can even play the music you want to put it to and uh, have them going at the same time to see what it sounds like. And just for keeping your feet sharp, your hands sharp, really serves a purpose. This particular kit is a Yamaha DTX Explorer, I think it is. Um, and you'll notice there's a there's been a few changes. Um, first of all, it's got speakers. Second of all, it's got a subwoofer, which you can see down there. Third, this is, I'd say, essential if you're a double bass player. Um, this is a Roland kick trigger. The, the Yamaha one, that it came with was about a tenth of the size circumference wise and the trigger point in the center was tiny so when I was doing double bass especially um, heel toe stuff it wasn't picking it up because the the trigger area isn't wide enough as you'll see in this this is wide and it picks that up no problem it's a phenomenal change um, a, a, a really good upgrade. So I'd say if you're a, if you're a double bass player, if you're a heavy metal guy, speed metal guy, you definitely need a kick trigger like this. You can get them on eBay for. Well, I got this one for about two hundred, which was a bargain, but you can get them for anywhere between one eighty and three hundred pounds. It's uh, I know it sounds like a lot, but I'd say it's essential. Next change is that that's also a roll, and it's a roll and snare. Um, that's been a good addition because on, on both of these triggers, the bass and the snare, you can adjust the tension, which you can't with the ordinary Yamaha pads that come with it. And that's the next thing I'd say is that mesh heads do make the world of difference. Um, they give you a, a more, far more realistic feel, more realistic rebound. It's just a pleasure to play. And these pads, these... Uh, Yamaha electric trigger pads, so a lot of entry-level kits have these. Not that enjoyable to play, especially not with your snare or kick. You can get away with them for toms, but I'd say that's as far as it goes. If, if you're serious about your practice, I mean, you could get by with, you know, these for your snare, what have you, but you really want to be getting mesh. So, I'll step behind the kit, I'll just pause the video. So here we are behind the kit. Um, this is what we're looking at. Roland V-drums. Um, 
definitely worth getting, makes all the difference guys. Um, proper set of hi-hats, this came with the kit, it's, it wasn't included, if you were to buy this kit new you wouldn't, you wouldn't get that, but um, a proper hi-hat definitely makes a difference. Yep, um, really nice feeling actually, quite surprised. Um, this is the module, you can configure it however you want, it's got something like 30, 40 different sound options and modes, which is something obviously you can't do on an acoustic kit. So for home use you can have quite fun programming a reggae kit and just uh, mucking around. These cymbals, uh, I don't know what style you call these, I'm not the biggest fan of They're okay, but I, I, I would like to upgrade them at some point. But here's the here's the speakers, and uh, I don't know much about electric kits at all, but I didn't know you could actually get such things. And uh, these are really cool. I've got to say, I don't know what the output is on them, but uh, for me, if I was going to have an electric drum kit, I want to make some noise. And I can make some noise in this. This is the subwoofer. It obviously came with it. This is Yamaha as well, so obviously I have a Yamaha Oak custom drum kit and I rate the Yamaha stuff. And you can fiddle with the volume and all that on there. What a tool. So if, um, if it, the thing that always put me off about electric drum kits is they don't make enough noise. And, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose, but if you've got the time at home and you want to make some noise like I do from time to time, get yourself a subwoofer, can't recommend it enough, get yourself some speakers. And of course, most of the time you can't actually make noise. So you can plug in some headphones. Focus. What is going on with the focus? There we go, you can plug in some headphones there. Mess of cables, I wouldn't want to be moving this about too much, but there you go. So, yeah, I've had literally hours of fun on this thing, practicing heel-toe. Of course, now I'm on camera, I'm a bit dodgy. Practicing heel-toe, trying out ideas that I wouldn't be able to normally. That I wouldn't be able to normally. So, yeah, I, I still have my reservations about electric kits. You know, they're not good all the time, but I tell you what, if you're if you're a band, you're a gigging drummer, and you care about what you're doing, if you're a session guy, in this day and age, I'd say you need an electric drum kit. And this thing, this rig here that you're looking at, this cost me nearly 500 pounds. I bought it as it is, slapped the speed covers on, and uh, away I went. So, you know, electric drum kits, not all bad. Okay, guys, cheers. See you later.